Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's easy to fall into the devil's trap of giving lip service to God while our hearts are unbelieving. It's easy to hide rebellion against God under structures originally built to honor Him. The Word of Christ crushes such deceit, calling it out for the rebellion and unbelief that it is. For when Christ makes a family, He calls its members not into idolatrous power struggle, but into lives of repentance and service. Consider the people of the Promised Land at the time of Isaiah the prophet. Now, we, we typically call this land Israel, but from around 900-ish B.C., it was, a, it was a divided kingdom with Israel in the north and the southern kingdom of Judah. During the lifetime of Isaiah, the northern kingdom fell to the Assyrians in 722 B.C. During this time, the people of Judah and the southern king, kingdom grew arrogant. They had the temple. They had all the religious things, but a lot of their religion was performative, lip service, superficial. And so then, through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord said, Because this people draw near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. It shouldn't surprise any of us then that Jesus quoted the great prophet Isaiah some six and a half centuries later in his confrontation with religionists like the Pharisees. The Pharisees were, as it were, all about doing everything by the letter, doing the liturgy by the letter, doing everything rightly and teaching everyone rightly how to do it. And they were perhaps above all about, about displaying all of this for everyone to see. They had all this tradition that had developed, and mind you, a lot of this tradition went beyond what the Word of God commanded, and they had all these things, again, for you to do to show yourself and others how holy and righteous you were. For example, there was all kinds of ceremonial washing. The Greek word here is baptizo, and if that word sounds familiar to you, it should. Baptize means simply wash. They did all kinds of ceremonial washing of people in various places and situations, and they had all kinds of ceremonial washing of things, as St. Mark tells us, of cups and pots and copper vessels and even dining couches. By washings, things were marked as sacred. Now, marking things as sacred and holy, like blessing a house or blessing the rooms in the house or blessing a piece of artwork for dedication in the church, for example, these, these are all good things. But if you're doing them to show off, then as Jesus says, you are honoring God with your lips but your heart is far from him. Now, at the risk of offending such people, and this will go perfectly because we have baptism at the next service, let me give you an example. If you baptize your children, but then do not raise them in the faith by regularly taking them to church and praying them, teaching repentance and practicing that in your own household, then you are giving lip service to God, but your heart is far from him. And thus you need to repent. Now the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter is that every single one of us, and by every single one of us, I mean every adult, every child here today, we all have at least one besetting sin. We have at least one pet sin. One, one thing we love to pursue more than God himself. At least one. And whatever that is for you, whatever that is for you, let's call it what it is, a false god. 
And the Lord has a commandment about that. You shall have no other gods before me. And so the truth of the matter is that every single one of us in some way honors God with our lips, but our hearts are far from Him. Every single one of us needs to repent. And fortunately, there's good news for us. For as the Lord Jesus says in Luke chapter 5, He came not to save the righteous, but sinners like us. And that brings us to family life under God. Consider the summary of family life under God in Ephesians chapter 5. Notice, first of all, here what God says at the end of that passage. Here, St. Paul, as with Jesus before him, quotes the foundational creation account in Genesis 2. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two become one flesh. This mystery is profound. And I'm saying that it refers to Christ in the church. By God's design, our families are to reflect the relationship between Christ and the church. We are all, as St. Paul writes in Ephesians 5.21, to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We revere Christ for who He is, and we revere Christ for what He has done for us. We revere Christ because He is the eternal Son of God who came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life as the ransom for us. We revere Christ indeed for what He did. Indeed, what only He as God in the flesh could do. He took the punishment for our sins and for the sins of of the whole world. He took the punishment that we deserve, every one of us, for those lip service things we talked about a minute ago that aren't so innocent after all. The good news, the gospel, is not only that he was the final sacrifice taking the punishment for our sins, but that he was also raised from the dead in the body, incorruptible, and the good news, as the Scripture tells us, is that when you are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that you are, you are covered with His righteousness. You are forgiven your sins. You are given the Holy Spirit by, by whom we believe this and have eternal life. And that reality of the gospel of Jesus that has been given to us as a gift, that is the foundation for how we understand God's design for the family. In his workbook, United in Christ, Preparing for Christian Marriage, Scott Stigmeyer writes, and I included this quotation in your sermon notes today, the intimate bond that exists between a man and a woman in marriage is especially blessed and rewarding to the heart because of its close resemblance to the self-giving nature of God in Christ to His bride, the Holy Church. Together, male and female, they are called God's image and likeness. They complement each other. The Scripture directs all believers to exemplify a spirit of submissiveness out of reverence for Christ. Willing submission is an act of love and respect. Therefore, mutual respect and kindness will always characterize their relationship. But the Word of God teaches that the husband is modeled after Christ's offering of himself on the cross, and the wife is modeled after the bride, who receives the benefits of the bridegroom's gifts and devotes herself to service and thanksgiving. Saying that the man is the head of the woman is not about governance. It is about service. A husband who says he loves God and works hard all day that, but will then not listen to his wife or seek her counsel for their life together is giving lip service to God. A wife who says she loves God but publicly 
undermines her husband on social media and in conversation with her children, who does not seek to understand him and support him, may be honoring God with her lips on Sunday, but her heart is far from him. Children who confess the creed with confidence on Sunday, but then lie and cheat and steal from their parents are not honoring their parents or the God who gave those parents the authority to serve them. They are giving lip service to God. And let's reflect for a moment then, given the other texts, about the relationship about churchly tradition and life in the family. You see, the traditions that we observe, the standing and sitting, the kneeling and bowing, the sung liturgy, the hymns, the sanctuary, the artwork, are all there, all of it, to help us learn the faith of Christ and treasure it. These traditions are faithful to God and His Word and are beneficial, and that's why they have been observed literally, literally for millennia. The traditions are there to uphold the Word of God that we all, husbands, wives, and children of all ages, that we all might repent and believe. The traditions that uphold the Word of God, they are not there for show. And thus, the Word of Christ crushes our lip service religion calling it out for the rebellion and unbelief that it is. For when Christ makes a family, a nuclear family or the larger family of a congregation, he calls its members not into idolatrous power struggle or or lip service religion, but into lives of repentance and service. Friends, In your baptism, God forgave you, declared you his beloved child and a member of his eternal family. So let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, you have not paid lip service to us. You have redeemed us by your precious blood. By your Spirit, grant us repentance to believe in your forgiveness and to live holy lives. In your name we pray. Amen. We stand for the creed.